Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. Here's the Tuesday tip for today. So I was in a district working with their science and math teachers. Whoop, whoop, so excited to get everyone together. And we had this whoo, aha light bulb moment. Okay, it has to do with some graphs and how we name the graphs and what we use them for. So two pieces. First, let's talk about the naming. So this is called a line plot. Sometimes it looks like this, sometimes it looks like this x's or dots on it this we often call a line plot in our math from like kindergarten through about fifth grade and then all of a sudden we call this same thing a dot plot starting in sixth grade math which is a little interesting because two things one this is a line chart line plot in elementary math line chart in middle school science and math and high school science and math in the real world. Line plot, line chart. Okay, so we got that one that our students are working on. And then let's pick up the dot plot in middle school, dot plot, scatter plot, also sometimes called a dot plot. So then we've got these different graph types that are helping us do different things and we're changing up the names on our students. So one, Talk to your colleagues, figure out what y'all are calling the same graph so that we can get alignment within our buildings for what's going on with our students. Okay, that's the naming. Second piece, second part of the tip today. Helping our students look at one variable at a time and seeing the distribution of that variable is key understanding to move away from, I'm gonna look at one dot and focus on that one case to think aggregate about the variable, that is key to then make the transition of I'm looking at two different variables and I am looking in the aggregate across both variables. So if your students are struggling with scatter plots, with line charts, with some of these really common bivariate plots that we have, have them graph the data of one variable first and make note of what are the patterns, what are the distribution of each of the variables independently, and then put it together on a scatter plot or a line chart, depending on what data you have, and have them think about the relationship between the variables. So there, so there you have it. Two tips today, naming and why that single variable look of the distribution can be so helpful when we're setting our students up for success with working with their data. Hope you all enjoy, have a good day. Drop in the chat how you're doing or drop in the comments how you're doing this, what's working for your students. And we'll include a resource to a little bit more of this line plot, dot plot, scatter plot thing as an extra resource. Bye all.